Hello guys, how's it going? Mike coming at you here with another video on Vector Calculus. Today we are going to begin to get into surface area and surface integrals. Specifically, we're going to get into the derivation uh, for the formula uh, for surface area. Uh, previously, we talked about parameterizations of surfaces, uh, where we can take every order triple, x, y, z, that lies on some three-dimensional surface that we'll call capital S. Uh, and we can come up with functions for each of these x, y, and z coordinates. Uh, each of these guys are functions of two variables. Typically, we use the variables u and v. Uh, and we can write this all as a nice vector function, uh, capital phi hat uh, is what we uh, typically uh, call it. So capital phi hat is a vector function. Uh, it takes some region in the UV plane and maps it to this 3D surface S. S is the image, then, of capital phi hat, uh, and we're going to assume that S is a differentiable surface. Now, how we're going to come up with the formula for surface area uh, is going to be very similar to how we uh, came up with the formula for area under a curve, uh, volume under a surface, uh, arc length of a, a curve, um, all these things using the same kind of uh, trick, the same kind of method. We're going to take the actual thing that we want to find, we're going to take the surface, we're going to break it up into a smaller uh, pieces. For each of these pieces, uh, we're going to come up with a patch uh, that kind of, that kind of uh, covers it. The, the patch will do uh, a fairly good job at estimating the true area uh, of that uh, little part of it, but it doesn't match it uh, quite. Uh, we're going to come up with a formula for each of these patches, and then we're going to add up the area of each of these patches, and that will give us our estimate for the total surface area. Then, once we've come up with the estimate for the total surface area, we're going to let these patches uh, shrink. Uh, as the actual parts of the surface shrink, uh, as these things uh, shrink down to one point, uh, the estimate becomes closer and closer to uh, the actual uh, surface area of that particular piece. So, I have a couple graphs here. Uh, the graph on the left is a rectangular region in the UV plane. We're going to do this with a rectangular uh, region. Uh, you could do this with a non-rectangular region. But for the sake of these and for the sake of things being nice, let's make it rectangular. Uh, so you can see that we've taken the U-axis and we've broken it up into N pieces. Uh, we've taken the V-axis and we've broken it up into M pieces. Uh, I've highlighted one uh, particular sub-rectangle here. I call it R sub IJ. Uh, length of this guy is delta U. Width of this guy is delta V. Uh, and I labeled one particular corner uh, U sub I comma V sub J. Then I took the image of the large rectangle uh, under capital Phi hat. Uh, we get our portion of our surface on the left-hand side. Uh, if you just look at the rectangle R sub IJ, the image of that guy under capital Phi uh, is, the, uh, is the rectangular piece that is outlined uh, in blue and mostly shaded in red. That's the actual part of that surface that corresponds to R sub IJ, and the area of that actual portion of that surface is what we ideally want. What I've uh, outlined and filled in in all red, and what I've labeled P sub IJ, uh, is the patch uh, for that uh, one particular portion of, of the surface. The area of this P sub IJ uh, is going to be my estimate for the true area. So what we're going to come up with is the formula for this P sub IJ. Uh, and one last uh, quick note here, uh, u sub i comma v sub j gets mapped to our points x sub i j comma y sub i j comma z sub i j. So, as I said, 
we have to come up with a formula for the area of this red patch. Well, I've uh, drawn a couple vectors here, uh, u hat and uh, v hat, uh, and those vectors u hat and v hat uh, span uh, this patch, uh, capital P sub i j. The span of those two vectors uh, will give me uh, that red patch. So what are these guys u hat and v hat? Well, uh, previously we talked about if we have a uh, surface, S, with a, parameter, a parameterization, uh, capital V hat, uh, we can find vectors that lie tangent to the surface uh, at uh, some point. We can find vectors uh, that lie tangent in the u direction uh, as well as uh, the v direction as well. Uh, and those vectors are anchored or based uh, at some uh, particular uh, u and v value, which corresponds to some uh, particular x, y, z um, uh, uh, value. So that's what we have uh, going on here. Uh, these vectors, u hat and v hat, each involve uh, the vectors that lie tangent to the surface in the u and v uh, directions, evaluated at this uh, particular u and v. Uh, but it's not just the uh, tangent vectors. Uh, we see here that u, sub, that u hat is t sub u sub i hat times delta u, and v hat is t sub v sub j hat times uh, delta v. Now, you may be wondering, how come we're bringing delta u and delta v into uh, this guy? Well, it's very possible that the tangent vectors uh, at this point here, at this special x, y, z point, um, it could be uh, that uh, those guys go uh, way past uh, this patch that we're trying to estimate the, uh, the um, area for. Uh, and this delta U and uh, this delta V uh, will help sort of uh, lasso uh, those guys uh, back in. Keep in mind, we are uh, ideally doing this with small values of delta U uh, as well as uh, delta V. So it's going to uh, shrink those vectors if they're uh, going too far out, uh, and it's going to sort of uh, lasso uh, those guys back in. Uh, and also, uh, we'll see uh, very shortly that those uh, delta U's and the uh, uh, delta V's, the action that we're going to do uh, with them uh, is really what lets us do what we want to do, which is uh, transform each of these patches from the estimate into the actual. So, I have u hat in terms of the tangent in the u uh, direction times delta u. I have delta v as the tangent in the v direction times delta v. How can I use these guys uh, to come up with the area uh, for this patch uh, piece of ij? Well, we're, we're going to go back to calc 3. Uh, when we first talked about the cross product, uh, in Calc 3, or perhaps you saw it in uh, Linear, um, you learned about the geometric meaning of what the cross product is uh, and what that uh, geometric uh, meaning is, is that the norm of the cross product of two vectors uh, is the area of the uh, parallelogram that's spanned by those two vectors. We said that P sub ij is the, uh, is the uh, parallelogram uh, that is spanned by uh, u hat and v hat. So the area of P sub ij is the norm of the cross product of u hat and v hat. So A of P sub ij is the norm of u hat cross v hat. Now, we've made the substitutions. U is delta U times the T sub U sub I hat. Uh, v hat is delta V times the T sub V sub J hat. Now, when you have uh, constants involved in the cross product or the norm of the uh, uh, cross product, 
those constants uh, just get pulled out, and you're left with the actual vectors uh, inside of your norm, and you're taking the cross product of the actual vectors. Uh, so that's how we go uh, from here uh, to here. So we see that the area of this one patch is the uh, norm of the cross product of T sub U sub I hat and T sub V sub J hat, and then times the delta U and the delta V uh, that go on the outside. So that's the formula for the area for this one uh, particular patch P sub I J. Well, we can do the same kind of thing for every one of these pieces that we have here. Uh, we can create patches for each of these other parts. Uh, we can um, find the vectors that lie tangent in the U and V uh, direction. Uh, we can do the same calculation here. And we see that the estimate for the total surface area is a double sum. Uh, J goes from 0 to M minus 1. I goes from 0 to N minus 1 of the norm of the cross product of T sub U sub I hat and T sub V sub J hat times the delta U times the delta V. Now, <clears throat> the reason this is a double sum uh, is because you don't necessarily have to have broken the U and V axes up on the left-hand side uh, into the same number of pieces. Uh, it can certainly vary uh, for each axis. So, so that's why we specify that this is a double sum. Well, if we let N and M go to positive infinity... So we're taking the u-axis, we're breaking it up into tinier pieces. Uh, we're taking the v-axis and we're breaking it up into tinier pieces as well. Uh, what we're doing when we let n and m go to positive infinity uh, is we're really letting the delta u and the delta v uh, go to zero. And before I mentioned why the delta U and the delta V uh, played a role in these U hats and V hats, uh, well, this is the other uh, reason. As these guys uh, shrink uh, and get closer and closer to uh, zero, your red patch piece of IJ uh, then uh, matches uh, more and more perfectly uh, with the phi of R sub IJ, the thing that is in blue. <coughs> So as we take the limit as n and m both go to positive infinity of that double sum, this should be looking uh, pretty familiar uh, from Calc 3 as well as earlier on in the course. Uh, this should look like a double integral, and that is exactly what it turns into. It turns into the double integral over your uh, domain D, which is that region in the UV plane. Uh, it's the double integral over D, of the norm of the cross product of T sub U hat and T sub V hat uh, DU DV. Now I say DU uh, DV here, uh, DU DV, DV uh, DU really does not matter. For the most part, we typically do these calculations with nice uh, rectangular uh, uh, regions, so overall, uh, not a huge. Um, not a huge deal as far as the order, but over some uh, non-rectangular uh, regions, you will want to be careful. So this is the actual statement of the uh, formula here. So let capital Phi hat uh, be a parameterization of a 3D surface S. Uh, phi hat is X, Y, and Z, each of those three, a function of u and v, and suppose s is a differentiable surface, except possibly at a finite number of points. This is not typically something we are really going to have to uh, worry with. Uh, just know that you can still do this, uh, even if your surface is not differentiable at a finite number of points. Then the surface area, which we call A of s, for this surface capital S, is given by the double integral over D of, now this is D and capital S, to be very careful of D little s, D little s hat. Uh, this is now D capital S with no hat, uh, and that is 
uh, the uh, double integral over D of the norm of the cross product of T U hat and T V hat D U D V. So two things that you want to make sure that you have down solid. These guys right here are the same thing. And T sub U hat and T sub V hat, uh, just like we had seen uh, when, when we had talked about the parameterizations of 3D surfaces. Now, if your surface is the union of smaller uh, surfaces, uh, then under the same uh, hypotheses, uh, you can calculate the area of each of the smaller surfaces making up the total thing, and then add those guys up, and that gets you the area uh, for the entire surface. Now, for a little bit of algebraic fun, uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, to verify uh, that the norm of the cross product of these tangent vectors, the norm of the cross product of t sub u hat and t sub v hat, uh, is actually the square root of the sum of the squares uh, of some uh, Jacobian uh, determinants. Uh, that's a fun little thing that I'll let you verify on your own. Uh, so the other way that we can write this formula uh, is that the area of your surface S is the double integral over the region D of the square root of the uh, Jacobian determinant of x and y with respect to u and v squared plus the Jacobian determinant of y and z with respect to u and v squared plus the Jacobian determinant of x and z with respect to u and v squared du dv. That is it uh, for this video on the derivation of the formula uh, for surface area. Uh, next video, uh, we will uh, get into uh, calculating surface area uh, as well as uh, surface um, integrals uh, and doing some sample problems uh, with these guys. Uh, so for now, I will see you guys later.